artifacts are important objects to the lore of Stalker, and if you played all three games, you've probably noticed that the artifacts from Shadow of Chernobyl are very different from those in Clear Sky and Call of Pripyat. Hello Stalkers, and welcome to the Anomalous Dugout. In this video, we will come up with an explanation that fits the lore as to why this major difference exists. Before we start, let's quickly recap what we know. In all three games, artifacts are created by anomalies. In Shadow of Chernobyl, they are visible to the naked eye and can be commonly found laying around in the zone. Meanwhile, in both Clear Sky and Call of Pripyat, detectors are required to spot and reveal artifacts that are almost exclusively found in large anomalous clusters. Also, in these last two games, it is certain that emissions are responsible for the formation of artifacts, while we don't know that for sure in Shadow of Chernobyl. Now, if you want to see more about the differences between artifacts from the different games, please check out our other videos where we showcase all of them. So, why are artifacts in Shadow of Chernobyl different? We could just say that the creators of the game found new IDs for artifacts and decided to include them in their new games, but that would not be very lore friendly. That's why I came up with an explanation that fits the lore. Unfortunately, we have no way to confirm it, so we'll have to call it a theory. First, let's take a look at the timeline. Sure, Shadow of Chernobyl was the first game to be released, but the events of Clear Sky are prior to those of Shadow of Chernobyl. It means that artifacts didn't just change because they evolved over time, unless they changed a first time and then went back to their previous state. But remember what I said about emissions? They are for sure what makes artifacts spawn in Clear Sky and Call of Pripyat, but I'm pretty sure it's not the case in Shadow of Chernobyl, since emissions simply don't happen in this game, while artifacts do sometimes respawn. That raises another question. Why are there no emissions in Shadow of Chernobyl? Well, once again, you could say that the developers couldn't implement it for some reason. But let's find a better explanation. At the beginning of Clear Sky, a scientist says that According to our research, the next emission will not occur for at least two months, four days and seven hours. Of course, they probably have no way to precisely calculate such a thing, but the fact that they believe in that duration means that it is actually a possible timing during two emissions. In that case, it is clearly possible that all the events of Shadow of Chernobyl took place at a time where no emissions happened, minus the one at the end, of course. But then, why are emissions so frequent in Clear Sky and Call of Pripyat? My guess is that, in Clear Sky, emissions are regularly happening in order to stop Strelok and his group, and they stopped afterwards for some reason. Maybe too many emissions are dangerous for the sea consciousness or for the zone. Or maybe they changed their tactic by sending their agents to take care of the Strelok problem. As for Call of Pripyat, I think that since Strelok destroyed the sea consciousness, there is no one left to restrain the zone's growth, and that explains the increased frequency of emissions. Getting back to artifacts, imagine that what I said before is true. While the sea consciousness was alive, emissions only occurred rarely, except in clear sky for specific reasons. And after it died, emissions happened much more frequently. My theory here is that a certain type of artifact, those from clear sky and call of Pripyat, appears during emissions, while another type those from Shadow of Chernobyl appears over time in anomalies without needing an emission to be created. 
Let's call them types A and B. When emissions are too frequent, type B artifacts don't have enough time to form and only type A artifacts are found. And when emissions happen rarely, only type B artifacts could be found, given that all the type A artifacts spawned in the last emission were already collected. So that's my theory. Please feel free to tell me what you think in the comments below. But wait, we're not done. There is actually some more information scattered in the games that further encourage this explanation. For example, some stalkers in Clear Sky will tell the player that artifacts are no longer visible, meaning that artifacts were actually visible before the events of Clear Sky, which perfectly fits the theory. Also, type A artifacts are all radioactive, with only three exceptions. While type B artifacts aren't necessarily radioactive, but can have other negative properties. Considering that emissions are supposed to be extremely radioactive, this would fit the idea that type A artifacts are created by emissions, and type B artifacts are not. Besides, the compass artifact acts just like type B artifacts in the way that it doesn't require a detector to be found, and we know that the compass is found in the space anomaly, in which there are probably no emissions. Another artifact that doesn't require a detector to be seen is the Earth of the Oasis, that was probably created over time, considering its nature and the fact that it never responds, which gives more credibility to the assumption that Type B artifacts are created over time and not by emissions. Moreover, it is no secret that Shadow of Chernobyl has less anomaly types and anomalies in general than the other games. This is coherent with the fact that emissions don't happen in the original game and that the last emission was a long time before its beginning, as the PDA Encyclopedia confirms that without emissions anomalies can't regenerate and disappear after a while. This would explain why many known anomalies that appear in clear sky, like the gas for example, are completely absent from Shadow of Chernobyl but returned in Call of Pripyat. And this also explains the decreased number of anomalies in general in Shadow of Chernobyl. Basically, only the strongest and most resilient anomalies would remain. Finally, the theory would also explain why in Shadow of Chernobyl military helicopters are able to reach the center of the zone without flying into air anomalies. Indeed, we know from Call of Pripyat that the army have maps of anomalies, and considering that no emission happened in Shadow of Chernobyl and that most anomalies only move during emissions, these maps would actually be accurate. Furthermore, it makes the mistakes made by the military in Operation Fairway more believable, as at the time of the operation their maps had already proven to be efficient. Sadly for them, emissions happened since then, and this led to the crash of all Stingray choppers, as it is depicted in Call of Pripyat. So in the end, we can see that many elements from all three games hint towards this theory that artifacts are different in Shadow of Chernobyl because of the lack of emissions. Now whether you agree or not, make sure to tell me about your opinion on this, and if you find any other clues concerning this artifact mystery, leave them in the comments below. As for now, I thank you for watching, stalkers, and goodbye.